Hi guys, welcome back to the Fab Farms. So earlier this week, I did a video on tungsten grinding and more specifically around dedicated tungsten grinder or not. Um, I kind of left that video open-ended. Like it wasn't like a specific, this is what you need to do, this is how you need to do it. It's more of a food for thought. And basically there is, you do want to be careful about how you grind your tungsten. You want to make sure you use some sort of dedicated-ish tungsten grinder. You don't want to contaminate that tungsten. If you do have a bunch of contaminants on your tungsten, you know, you want to knock the majority of that stuff off on uh, your normal bench top grinder or sanding disc or whatever, and then go to your dedicated tungsten grinder. This video is not going to be about that. Just kind of wanted to recap a little bit. This video is going to be more about how you need to grind your tungsten and how it affects the weld arc itself. So, there's a couple different ways we can talk about this. Um, obviously, there's the tungsten types. Most, most of the time associated by color. Most people kind of associate different types of tungsten with color. Uh, what I will tell you is don't get too, too overwhelmed with what kind of tungsten you're using. Um, really, like a red tungsten or 2% uh, Thoriated tungsten is gonna be perfect for just about everybody in every application, especially when you're getting started. Uh, I like to use the 2% lanthanated. I think this is more specific to the inverter machines. If you have like a transformer style machine, you don't wanna use this stuff. So like I said, don't get too overwhelmed in that. They make a ton now and um, you can really let it affect you. So there's two ways that I like to, to sharpen tungsten. And that is, depending on what I'm doing, so let's see here. So, depending on what I'm doing, depends on how I have my torch set up, configured. Uh, this is gonna be my typical TIG torch setup, shorty cap. Uh, most of the time I run the Furic, uh FUPA 12. And this is for my mild steel, steel, my stainless, my you know chrome molly, anything like that. I'm, this is pretty much my kind of standard setup here. Uh, 330 second tungsten. Now, if I want to weld aluminum, uh, I changed my torch setup a little bit, and I'll kind of explain to you why. I mean, this is not a must-have, but I'll kind of explain to you why. So we talked about you know double grinding tungsten, and usually these are just you know, one full length of tungsten that I've split in half, basically. And these work well for the mild steels and the stainlesses. Now, if I'm gonna go with aluminum, pull this cup off. And I'll also change the back side of this thing. And I'll kind of explain to you why. And it's not 100% necessary. It's kind of more of, of my personal preference when it comes to welding aluminum. When I weld aluminum, I like to... run a full piece of tungsten. So we'll put this big bad boy on there. Or at least when I can, if I have the room, um, I like to run a full piece of tungsten and I'll usually run something like a uh, number seven, number eight, or smaller. It could be this style or, or the clear style, either or. And the reason for this is when you're welding in DC, all the electrodes and, and basically the heat is flowing out of the tungsten into the workpiece. So the, the electrodes are coming this way. It's a one directional type of thing. It's all flowing into the workpiece. It's melting that puddle. And that's basically how the DC works. Well, AC is alternating current. So you have electrodes flowing both ways. You have electrodes flowing out into the workpiece. And then when it flips, 
you have electrodes flowing back into the tungsten. So when the electrodes are flowing out into the workpiece, that's what's heating the, the aluminum itself. When you have the electrodes flowing back into the tungsten, that's the cleaning side of the AC balance. We'll kind of get into that later. But what happens is it actually puts a lot more heat in the tungsten than you would have in say DC welding. So the tungsten's gonna get a lot hotter. And so my philosophy on this is if, if you're gonna try to minimize the amount of heat that you're putting in, the, in that tungsten, you need to have a longer piece of tungsten. So what I try to do is use a full piece of tungsten and uh, it helps a lot with minimizing the amount of heat affected area on the tungsten itself. So it's still gonna get just as hot. The tip is probably gonna get just as hot, but because you have that extra length of tungsten in here, it's gonna be able to kind of dissipate or share that heat throughout the tungsten itself. And it doesn't, you wouldn't really notice it. Like if you were using this versus that, you probably wouldn't notice it at first glance. It's more of just a me thing. Um, I like to give it the best opportunity to keep that tungsten nice and healthy uh, as I work through that piece. So anyway, quick little philosophy on how I use, what length of tungsten I use and how I use it. Not very critical when it comes to DC welding. As a matter of fact, as I sharpen it down, I'll get those pieces pretty short over time and it doesn't really matter to me. Now let's talk about how we sharpen that tungsten, how we sharpen the tip of that tungsten and why it matters. So tungsten sharpening, this is, this may be tough for me to show you on camera. I may do some illustrated drawings I might drop in here, but the way that you sharpen your tungsten is pretty uh, important. It's gonna affect the way that the arc acts. Uh, like I mentioned, when you're welding, when you're DC welding, the electrodes are flowing out of the tungsten into the workpiece. And so the way that you sharpen your tungsten can affect the way that those electrodes flow out of this thing, in turn affecting the way that the arc itself will act. Uh, primarily, the grain or the direction in which you sharpen that tungsten. So, say you put this thing on a grinding disc this way and you sharpen it around the tip of this thing or at a slight angle, those grinding marks are gonna be in a swirl pattern or just a round pattern and that can cause the arc to kind of swirl or wander, believe it or not. So what you wanna do is you wanna sharpen this tungsten with the grain as close to, if not exactly in line with the tungsten itself. So you want that, you, know, you want those electrodes to kind of flow down the tungsten in the grain of that grinding and right out the tip of this thing. You want to kind of direct it right out the tip of this thing. Any kind of swirl or anything that you have in the grinding marks themselves can affect it. Um, and so to give your best, give yourself the best chances of a very stable arc that doesn't wander, doesn't swirl, and uh, makes your job much easier. You wanna to try to sharpen that thing um, exactly in the same direction that the tungsten is. So I hope that makes sense. Kind of gives you a little behind the scenes of why that is, not just that you have to do it. I think a lot of times people say, you know, you gotta do it this way. This is the only way you need to do it. It's the only way it works. I wanna to try to tell you why in the simplest way without making this thing super complicated. So there you go. Tungsten grinding. Now, there is science-based uh, tip angle. I think it's like 60 degrees, but that kind of stuff is more, to me, it's more about personal preference. Everybody has their own preferences on, on how sharp they want that tungsten, what that tip angle should be. Uh, you can figure that out on your own. Um, most of your dedicated tungsten grinders have that kind of built into it. Some people like it much sharper, some people like it a little duller. Um, it really depends on what kind, of, what kind of piece you're working on as well because that tip angle is also gonna affect the cone shape of the arc itself. So if you want a wide cone, a wider cone, you're gonna put more of a blunt taper on that thing. If you wanna try to get a sharper cone, you can put a little sharper angle on it. I mean, it's really personal preference, depends on what you're working on, what you like. Um, and it's more of one of those things you can kind of figure out for yourself versus 
a, a one a one angle fits all type of scenario. One other thing I kind of failed to mention too is like on tungsten like this, if you do use the two-sided method, or if you're not using two-sided method, I guess is more along the lines of what you need to know. The two-sided method, you're gonna be sharpening both sides, which is fine. Uh, if you don't though, I do suggest that you at least kind of round off this corner edge on, on the back side of it because it'll help you get it in that collet much easier. So if you're only sharpening one side, at least kind of round off that back edge. It's gonna help you get it in and out of that collet much easier. You're not gonna fuss and fight with it. Uh, sometimes even taking off the paint that is on the end of these helps with that as well. Uh, the problem with that then is you don't know what kind of tungsten you have. But if all the tungsten you have is the same, then it won't matter. So there you go. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. Another little quick tip. Hope you enjoyed that. See you guys for more. Y'all gonna do work, son.